gardener friends, my name is Andrea and we are here today in my garden. I love gardening, it's my favorite hobby. In fact, I love it so much I created this channel so I could share some of the fun things that I do here in my garden with you and so I could meet other people like you who love gardening as much as I do. For an entire month, I have been trying to get out here in the garden to take you on a full garden tour front to back and back to front. I have not yet been able to do that on my channel and I thought the month of May would be a perfect time to do that because things are beginning to bloom, all the bright colors and the textures are beginning to fill in. My garden critters are starting to come out, the birds, the bunnies, the butterflies, and I just wanted to share with you the full picture of what's going on here in my garden. Now I encourage you, continue watching until the end because I have three surprises that I'm gonna share with you along the way. One of the surprises you've never seen before on my channel. I have not shared with you ever, and I'm looking forward to showing you that today. So are you ready? Come on, let's get started. For those of you who are new here, I'll introduce myself. I am Andrea, like I said. I garden here in Oklahoma, zone 6B, 7A, depending on exactly where you are in Oklahoma. I am here in a suburban lot in a neighborhood, like many of you. I think my yard is kind of more of on the small to average size. So if you have a small or average size space to garden in, then you'll relate to my garden very well. Let's start with the front yard, come on. start our tour of the front yard over here on the left side. All of the utilities are over here on this side of the house. The air conditioning unit, the water meter. My husband's going to build me a nice little fence so I can put that up there to help hide the trash and the air conditioning unit but until then I have this crepe myrtle here that I'm expecting will bloom real pretty rather than trimming it up into a tree form I'm leaving it more like a shrub so that when it blooms hopefully it will cover more of the stuff behind it oh a butterfly is enjoying the grass this pretty grass I put here to help hide the water meter and um, it's continuing to grow it's just a baby and it will look nice this summer. I leave it throughout the fall. It starts to get, you know, it ages and starts to turn kind of brown. And then it looks real fall-like and we can pop a pumpkin in there next to it and looks real pretty. Look at this double knockout. Just vivid. But more importantly, look behind it. My clematis. The trellis that it's on is homemade. Uh, there's a video on my channel if you're interested in making your own. We had an old baker's rack in the garage, just a piece of junk we used to store things on. We took it apart and made a trellis out of it. The next time that you're at a garage sale, grab that baker's rack that somebody's throwing out or selling for a couple bucks. And then watch my video and you can make a trellis of your own. Now let's take a look over here at what I call my welcome container. Our front porch is set back so far that you can't really see it from the road. So I use this spot right here to welcome our guests with some pretty colorful plants and flowers. I usually have something thematic in there. Whatever the holiday is coming up, I'll usually put something fall in the fall and Easter -ish and Easter time. Of course, I've got my handy dandy purple fountain grass. If you watch my channel for any length of time, you've seen that that's one of my favorite annual grasses. It'll grow about four times that size, and then the Oklahoma wind will just grab a hold of it and it'll sway back and forth so beautifully. And, um, and then I leave it throughout the fall, and then that way it starts to turn that straw color, and I'll put pumpkins in there and scarecrows, and then I leave it all winter long because it kind of adds 
some winter interest to the pot. The front porch I mentioned sits way back, so it only gets morning sun. So I have found that these Boston ferns, they work real well back here in this cave of a porch. And they're large enough that you can almost see them from the road. Take a look at these Coreopsis. Look at that. They glow. These are the kind of flowers that I had absolutely no expectation for. I don't even know where I got them. I think I grabbed a little bundle for a couple bucks at one of the Lowe's stores in town, threw it in the ground, and had no expectation of anything special. The next year they came back looking amazing, and every year they bloom, I'm more and more impressed. Behind the Coreopsis, you'll see a black diamond crepe myrtle. My husband chose the crepe myrtle. I was not a fan of the dark color and didn't want something black in front of the house, but you know what? I was wrong. It is one of my favorite plants out here in the front yard. It'll grow about 12 feet tall, so it'll get much, much larger. But I love the contrast of the black against the red brick, and we're expecting that it's gonna look fantastic when it's about 12 feet tall, and we'll trim it up to arch over the doorway and the window just to kind of frame the entryway to our home. Underneath this window is Wygelia, a sonic bloom Wygelia. I recently posted a video on my channel about the Wygelia. It's one of the most beautiful plants that most of us have never heard of. In the spring, it blooms a fuchsia pink. I mean, it's so pink that you can see it all the way from the road. It is a showstopper, absolutely beautiful. And then it does continue to bloom a little bit throughout the entire summer. However, spring is when it really puts on its main show. I encourage you, check out that video and uh, you can see if you'd like to have a Wygelia in your yard too. Below the Wygelia is a frosted juniper. I think it's Dobbs, Dobbs frosted juniper. And look at all the beautiful colors, blues and greens and yellows. It's going to stay close to the ground, but it will continue to grow wider. So it'll fill in. And my boxwoods, my boxwood hedge is smaller than I prefer, but I knew they were going to be slow growers when I planted them. They're worth the wait though. I needed something that was going to be the bones of the flower garden. I needed something that was going to be weighty and kind of hold down the fort in the winter. When everything else was sticks, I needed something green, a nice hedge back there. So even though they're small right now, I anticipate that they will get about three times that size and they'll look real nice, kind of connecting those two windows together and filling in that space. In front of the boxwood hedge is my firelight hydrangea. This hydrangea blooms big white flowers and then they age into I would call them a pinkish maroon color as the summer progresses into the fall. And last year I posted a video, so I encourage you to check out that video, Firelight Hydrangea, and you can enjoy watching her blooms age from white into pink. And on to my Pieris, my three, I believe that's called Pieris, my three little shrubs. I bought them because of their shape and their color. They were a dark, dark, glossy green. They're not glossy green anymore. I'm not quite sure what's going on. And over here on the side of the house, a few mums. And look at this guy. I wish I had known it was going to be so beautiful and big. I would have planted it closer to the bricks. It's hiding behind the tree. You can't enjoy it from the front. And this is my wine and roses Wygelia. I have a tip for you. Don't prune your Wygelia back as much as I did. Don't be too heavy handed with it or you're going to end up with a small Wygelia in the spring. And look at this gorgeous brown cover.
I had wanted to put this in the backyard, in my green and purple garden actually, but it was just too hot and sunny for it. It loves it here in this one teeny tiny bit of shade that I have on the side of the house. So I'm gonna let it stay right here and be happy. Next to my azalea, who also seems to enjoy the north side of the house. And that was the front yard. Let's take a look at the backyard, come on. My goodness, it looks like it's gonna rain again. It has rained for four days straight. How much more rain can we take? This is my backyard. My backyard is full, hot, hot sun. As you can see, we planted a couple trees, but it'll be a little while until those trees are large enough to give us some wonderful shade. So right now, I am gardening with full sun gardens. So if you don't have any shade at your house, I completely relate. So what I've learned is if you can't beat them, join them, right? So what I did over here on my left under the windows, I started a butterfly garden. Most of the plants that butterflies love, love hot, hot, full sun. And so I love butterflies and they love flowers that love full sun. So it looks like a perfect match, right? I've got some purple Miss Molly right here. And a beautiful, more true purple. I guess that Miss Molly is a little bit more of a maroon. This garden is looking a little bit sparse right now, but in about a month, it will just explode with beautiful blooms. Daisies, black-eyed Susans, cone flowers, um, blanket flowers. The butterflies will love it. And if you've been following my channel at all, then you remember my water garden. It wasn't my intention that it would be a water garden, but that's what's happened. Take a look at this. My south facing garden collects water. It collects so much water that I have called it my water garden just to be funny. But it's actually been quite a challenge because there's so much water there that whatever plants are here have to be able to handle sitting in water, actually sitting in the water for multiple days until it drains. There's not a whole lot of plants out there that are willing to do that. But then also at the end of the summer here in Oklahoma, we don't get very much rain at all. And then what happens is these same plants that need to be willing to sit in water have to be willing to go without water until I'm able to get out here and give them a little bit. I'm thrilled to have found the daylily because daylilies are actually one of those plants. They're willing to go with no water at all. Find them around ponds and, and creeks and things like that because they actually love water. They've turned out to be a dream come true plant for me. They are a little stressed right now because I just planted, oh, there's thunder. Because I just planted a couple of them here and they're looking a little stressed out from their recent uh, move to this garden. The crepe myrtle will bloom purple and uh, that will take place closer to July, I believe, is when all my crepe myrtles really begin to bloom real pretty. My little roses are struggling in all the water. I'll move my little roses as soon as I find a good spot for them, but my children gave those to me for Mother's Day and I don't wanna just take them out. I wanna put them somewhere special so I can keep them forever. Up here on the left, you can see our double knockout was our very first flower we ever planted in our yard. So it has a bit of sentimental value to us and some daisies. If I can keep the bunnies from eating my daisies, they look real pretty. A blanket flower is beginning to bloom. Blanket flowers are surprisingly so pretty and they're really easy to grow. You don't have to water them much. In fact, they prefer less water. Remember, I told you I have three surprises for you. Well, this is the first of three. Take a look at this. The Midnight Marvel Hardy Hibiscus. Look at that. One month growth. One month. And it's already reached halfway up the fence. I can't believe it. 30, ooh, that's a lot of thunder. We may have to cut our tour short. Many people have asked about the Midnight Marvel. How's it doing? How big's it growing? When do we get to see it? Well, here it is. Look at that giant. 
The Midnight Marvel Hardy Hibiscus is one of the most fun plants I've ever planted. It grows flowers on it. They're bright red and they're about the size of your face. I mean, they're huge. And so they stand out and everybody, it's, it's a showstopper. Everyone will ask, what is that? What's that beautiful flower? And they're the easiest plant I've ever planted. I just stuck it in the ground. I don't fertilize, nothing. We just make sure it gets enough water and it just, it just does amazing. You'll find an entire playlist on my channel. So check that out because it'll be a lot of fun for you to see what the Midnight Marvel Hardy Hibiscus looks like when it's in full bloom. It's just gorgeous. Surrounding those hibiscus, you'll see my great big yellow golden privets. We planted the privets because we wanted something that would help um, drown out the noise from the, the uh, traffic noise on the other side of the fence. I'm not sure they help, but they have really been a showstopper along with those hibiscus. Now, we're gonna have a bit of a space war. I have a video on my channel all about the privets, so you can check that out also. But um, they're supposed to be about 10 feet tall and about 10 feet wide. And so you can see they're growing so fast along with the hibiscus um, that we're probably gonna need to extend out away from the fence, the flower garden, to be able to give them a little bit more room to grow. And then I'm gonna have to keep them trimmed up or we're gonna have a problem. Right here in the middle in the spare spot is my sweet little crepe myrtle. It's a fast grower. She will bloom bright, bright red flowers. I put her here because she was supposed to grow up of the fence and then arch over and kind of connect these two gardens. Make it all flow real nice. And then underneath I could plant some pretty flowers. Well, we've had so many freezes here in Oklahoma the last couple years that she's died back to the ground for two years in a row. And this is her actual first year to come up in the spring and um, I'm hoping she makes it to the top of the brick post. Seems like a lofty goal, but she is uh, four years old now, four years underground. This is just one year above ground. And so I'm really, really hoping that she makes some big progress. More thunder, holy smokes. We're touring during a thunderstorm. Over here in the corner is our Leland Cypress. He's tied down because Oklahoma has had crazy, crazy winds. They always do, but this year was especially nuts and it actually fell over. I mean, just fell over flat on the ground. And uh, we thought we lost it, but we were able to set it back up and we uh, tied it down and it looks like we're, we're saving him. He looks like he's good. We just gotta let him root down in there real deep so he won't fall over anymore. My Laura Petalum froze back when the crepe myrtles did and has made significant progress this year. I love the whimsical, uh, flowy structure. My little rose bush is about to just explode with flowers. You can see all the pretty buds. The bird bath needs a bit of a bath itself. And clematis here on my little fence in front of my annual garden. I use this for butterfly plants also. I like to put annuals in here. It's worked out really nicely. I'll show you what I'm hiding behind this little fence. First of all, I am keeping the rabbit from eating my clematis with this ugly little uh, wire fencing, and I'm hoping to make a change and make that look a little bit nicer as the summer goes on. But look at this utility box. Not very attractive, huh? The utility box was so ugly, I didn't want it sitting out here in my garden. So my husband and I, we figured out a plan and we came up with a cute little idea to put that little fence in front of the utility box. And now I can use it like a trellis for my pretty flowers to trellis up. There is a video on my channel that talks about that too. Before we keep going with the flower bed, I wanna show you my tree, come on. This tree is our pride and joy. This is our Main Street Maple. My husband and I picked this out. We, um, we like to do special things in honor of our anniversaries or our birthdays so that we can have some memory makers along the way. And we went and picked out this tree on our wedding anniversary. Our wedding anniversary is in the fall, so that worked out perfectly because that's typically the time when you wanna plant your trees. And now every year when we sit on the patio, we can enjoy our Main Street Maple turning bright, bright colors, red, I think yellows and uh, oranges also 
and uh, we can remember that we bought this tree on our wedding anniversary. It makes it kind of special to us. Now, in order to plant this Main Street maple tree here, we had to move our white Natchez crepe myrtle over to here. And a white crepe myrtle Natchez is a really fast growing crepe myrtle. It will reach, I believe, about 24 feet high. I'll check that out and put the, uh, and I'll let you know if I'm right on the screen. But about 24 feet is what I recall, and it will grow fast, like three to four feet a year. And we wanted a fast grower so that it would provide shade for these windows back here. So that is our goal. Our fingers are crossed and we pray for this tree regularly. Now back over here, you can see that I have a really pretty wax privet. Most people probably would not want a wax privet in their flower bed, but I chose that because I needed something that would grow fast and large and help me create a barrier between that neighbor fence and our house. They had some very loud dogs over there and uh, they would bark when we were out in the garden and we needed something that would kind of create a bit of a buffer and I'm enjoying my wax privet. Now for those of you who don't like to get out in the garden and prune and trim a lot, you probably wouldn't choose the wax privet because you will be cutting on that maybe three, four times a year to keep it under control. Over here you see my green and purple garden. I'm in the process of redoing it because take a look at all these weeds. These are not weeds, this is allium. If you'll remember a little while back, I was bragging about how beautiful allium is and everybody needs allium and all the bees and all the butterflies love allium and it's true. However, this was not the right place to put the allium. So stay tuned because I am going to be making an allium video soon to explain how you can avoid this mess. I was very excited when I found these beautiful clematis at the nursery. They're just beautiful. And they're perfect to continue with my green and purple theme here in this side of the yard. Uh, let's see, it faces north. So they will get some hot, hot sun because this is Oklahoma, but this is one of the cooler spots in the backyard. We love our little fountain. My husband and I found it secondhand online and he helped spruce it up and fix a few things so that we could enjoy it here in our little garden. The patio is always fun to add lots of color. I have a few projects in the back there. You can see my gardenia trees. I found these at the nursery and I'm nursing them back to health so I can give them as some gifts to some very special people. I did not forget, I have my second surprise to share with you right now, come on. The other day when I came home from work and looked out the window, there was a rabbit inside my flower container underneath the butterfly bush and I got mad. That rotten rabbit is trying to eat my butterfly bush, which is unusual. They don't usually eat those. I was so mad. But no, she wasn't eating my butterfly bush. She was making a nest for her babies. I don't want to get too close. She pulled her fur out and lined the little nest with her fur. We're going to have babies. Now come on, let's check out the third surprise. Last year I found something fantastic on the clearance rack at my local Lowe's store. Take a look. It's a hydrangea tree. Isn't that something? It's beautiful. I found it on the clearance rack. It was mangled. I didn't know if I could save it. It was just a few bucks and they're normally a hundred dollar tree. I brought it home and couldn't find a spot for it. I knew it was a special tree and if it survived it would be just gorgeous. My husband suggested putting it behind the laundry room window because that way we have something pretty to look out and see when we're doing the laundry. A hundred dollar tree tucked away in the corner. Well, I am so glad I listened to him. It was a great idea because now every day when we walk past the laundry room, we get to look outside this window and see this beautiful tree.
just remember your garden is your garden and you get to choose to plant what you want, where you want to plant it. And that wraps up our May tour. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you subscribe so that you can follow along because we'll be back again this summer. We're going to have crepe myrtles in uh, bloom, hibiscus, hydrangea, butterfly gardens, all kinds of exciting things to see. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again. Favorite hobby gardener.